we have a sad story of something that happened to two Kenyan sisters actually. Now these sisters are from Kenya. They left Kenya to come over here to the United States. They said they want a better life. They came over and the name is Janet Oyuga and Angela Oyuga. They had bought a home in the Seattle area and it was a foreclosed home. Now the foreclosed home was originally belonged to a white woman by the name of Beverly Jean, 85 years old. So they bought the home and of course they home, they moved in. The lady was there, you know, they would have to evict her from the home, but they said, you know what? We, we're not going to treat her like that. Um, we, we, you know, have a heart. We kind, she's 85 years old. She could hardly walk, you know, let's just be nice to her. Uh, for a little while. The woman felt that it was getting the time for them to evict her from the house. She decided to get a revolver and kill Janet first. Then she shot Angela and Angela was taken to the hospital in critical condition, but she's going to survive. Just because she did not want to be removed from the home. First and foremost, I would have told my Kenyan sisters, Y'all should have got her out of there immediately. I don't care if she's 85 years old. That's her family problem. She needs to be out of there. You don't live with her. See, this is the thing. And I'm going to say this in this video. Africans coming over here to America. We know this place as African Americans. We know it from top to bottom. We know how we are looked at. We are treated. We know how white supremacy and racism treats us as well. And if you would have talked to your African American brothers and sisters, when you came here and tried to learn how these people would treat you, you wouldn't have made that move at all. That was completely dangerous. And this one sister lost her life because of it. Yes. I know African culture is a little bit more trusting than us. I know that from going over there, they don't really be suspicious of people like that. I know that. But when you come over here, you come into Babylon, you come into the belly of the beast. When you come here, yes, there's a lot of opportunity in America. Yes, it is. But you're dealing with the belly of the beast here and you better move a certain way or you're going to get caught up. See in Kenya, you can't have guns, but over here there's guns all over the place. And the people that shouldn't be having guns is the main ones who have it. You have people that come over here from Somalia, and in all these different other places, Nigeria, and you relegate yourself to these little communities by yourself. You don't want to interact with African Americans. Some of you, you don't even want to intermarry with African Americans. You say, no, 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 they gotta be, they gotta be our tribe. They gotta be this. They gotta be that all this separation until you caught up. Now I'm not saying those sisters had nothing to do with that. I'm just talking in general. This is why some black Americans, will say they don't like us, but you have to also understand it goes back to them folks. They vet who come in here and they also tell them to stay away from those African Americans. Too many people have said that coming to this country, the folks told them to stay away from us. We're lazy. We're violent. We, this, we, that automatically when they come into the country to create a division, they don't tell white people that come into the country, uh, to be citizens, stay away from those white Americans because you know, they mass shooters and they do this. They don't tell them anything like that. No, they don't. They, they have them work with each other. It's a whole messed up situation. So when you hear African Americans say that they don't like us it's because of that. But when you go to the continent, it's night and day. My thing is when you come over here, you need the first thing you need to do is go to the black community. That's the first thing you need to do, make you some friends and get schooled because if you're not getting school situations like this can happen. Now this one was charged with murder and whatever sentence they give her, and this is a life sentence for her. She's 85 years old. She ain't gonna make it too long in jail being 85 years old, but it doesn't bring Janet back. It doesn't bring her back. Now I know Angela after this tragedy, maybe she will go back to Kenya. Maybe she will. I don't know. You know, if you get an education here in America, get that, you know, get you a, a maybe a nursing or a, a doctorate or become a lawyer, do, do something here and then go back to the continent, go back to Kenya and Kenya could really use those skills. They need the skills over there. 
you're more safer in Kenya with gun violence, I would say, than you would ever be in America. I mean, this is a very sad story. But leave me a comment, let me know what you think about this particular story, you know, with these Kenyan sisters. I mean, they you know, didn't deserve that whatsoever. They were being kind. And the thing is, you can't be kind to everybody. That's why we so on edge in America as black Americans. And some people think, why are they so mean? Why did no? We have to be vigilant because black Americans would have never, 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 never allowed her to stay in the house. I wouldn't. I said, look, sh she got to go. Like it's my house now. I, it ain't my problem. She got to go. I don't care who she is. She got to go because they would kick me out. If, if she had bought the house, that just wouldn't have went down. So we, you have to, you know, learn the environment that you're in brothers and sisters coming to the country.